Welcome back to Big Board. We're looking at Last Blitzkrieg from MMP. It's the uh, innovative, different BCS system, Battalion Combat System. And uh, I, I wanted to kind of recap gameplay, but then also recap experience with the system and on all that sort of good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I've had, if you saw some of my posts, I had a few issues here and there just with me grokking the rules. Uh, particularly given this is a version 1 game and I'm using the version 2 rules not that there's any issues with backwards compatibility but there were from my gameplay in the past some significant differences and uh, it just took a little bit of oh I didn't realize you could do that type of thing and then obviously all of my other gameplay that I've had with the African themed uh sessions that I've had uh, for Brazen Chariots and you know, the other one, whatever it's called. And uh, and then I played Arrow Court, both uh, solo and opposed, although I was very heavily guided with the opposed play and very thankful for that guidance because it helped me understand a little bit more about the game system and stuff like that. So... I was coming into this thinking, oh, I'll just jump in and you know, get after it and roll some dice and compare it to Time for Trumpets, which is underneath this particular board. I've got two boards out on the table at the moment. And that'll be a fun little ex exercise because they both have a Bastogne scenario. Well, <clears throat> things haven't quite worked out how I thought they might. And this has taken a significant amount of time, longer amount of time to play. And I, and just so for full disclosure i'd use the chip pull method here so we keep things a little bit random versus having uh, a little bit more control just because i was playing solo and so we've kind of got to the point where in the scenario if by the end of this 22nd of december and the scenario starts on the 19th if uh, neither second pan second panzer and uh leah uh, which is just off screen here, I'm trying to get down there. All right, so these guys, I think it's seven of these and four of the four of the second panzer have to exit the map, which is just three or four hexes that way. So I, you know, uh, <clears throat> on the 21st, I had started pulling guys away from supporting the attack into Bastogne <clears throat> and position these so that even with two partial activations, they will have a chance to get off the map, uh, subject to weather and other bits and pieces and any interference, if any, by uh, the defenders of Bastogne. So that really leaves, on the 22nd, leaves the 26th uh, Volksgrenadier alone to try and continue pressing into the the defences around the stone of, uh, by the 101st Airborne. <clears throat> and you now, if you are all familiar with the BCS, you know that in order to be successful in a combat, you need to have one of these type of guys with a red number, uh, basically an armoured unit of some form or another. There's another one in here that I'm using as a support unit, but I could probably have flipped him over and he could uh, help as well. But you need these guys to drop the support that is in this hex somewhere underneath here. There's two of them. There's the top one, the tank destroyers, right? The 705th Battalion. They're spread out in penny packet bits and pieces. And it's an abstraction to represent, very effectively, to represent the way in which you know, infantry was deployed. And they would have tank support and AT gun support and, and maybe other... Uh, items or elements to reinforce the defenses, right? So every time you attack a specific hex, you would want to, you have to drop the support that was enhancing the defense of this particular unit, right? And so there was a unit, uh, maybe it was here, I guess. It was a unit here. And so, no, in fact, I'm trying to think now. No, it was, it was here. So there's a unit here and these chaps were back here. And so we engaged it, is the right, is the accurate term. We shot at it and uh, we 
dropped the support. So we had an effective result against that support. That then allowed us to pick up uh, or mitigate ne uh, negative DRMs against us uh, when we went to assault it. Now an assault, and here's where I, I get a little frustrated with the BCS system, you know, an assault or Malay or a combat, and it's called a combat, uh, and in this particular case, because we're using infantry, it's a regular combat. Uh, when we do a regular attack, there's this, there's this interchangeability uh, and swapping of terms for the same thing, or at least that's the way it appears to me in the rules, and it gets a little muddled in my tiny little mind. But nevertheless, I went and executed a standard attack, a regular attack against the Hex, and uh, we were successful. But because it took two shots to drop that, uh, that support, I had fired at it once, didn't work, I engaged it again, and it did work, and so we dropped the support. That uh, meant that no, there were no further actions that this unit could execute. He was finished, and there's not a finished marker, and you don't need them, and I've put the markers away. Uh, but nevertheless, these guys were back here. They were finished. We assaulted, and the uh, chap that's in the hex and supporting the attack, which they could do even though they were finished, they attacked, forced a retreat, uh, and we were able to... And in, and in this particular instance, there's a new rule that was not in the version one rules where there's this concept of refuge. So you take the unit off the map because there's really nowhere for them to retreat that was three hexes away that wasn't going to be in a zone of control and all this sort of stuff. So nevertheless, uh, we took them off the map or, you know, I think, I, you know, maybe I retreated them back to here somewhere here. In fact, that's probably them there, right there. Uh, so they come back on the next turn if they're if they're taken off the map. So we we went and did that exercise. I used up my two shots, right? So we're done now. We we really we really can't assault or combat any of these other regular combat any of these other hexes because we're not able to drop the support. And with that, we're going to get a negative DRM. That combined. That one DRM, combined with the fact that the quality of these guys is better than my guys because they're fours versus fives, they're in prepared defense, they have, uh, they might be in terrain as well in some cases. It means that when we look at the combat results table, if I put this here and I can show it to you, uh, on an average roll of a seven or eight, and I'm probably gonna get a minus one at best. Sorry, I'm, when I say yeah, probably at best, it, there, there won't be a positive tie roll modifier if I don't drop the support. We can look over here and see. And now, and keep in mind, this is the other issue that I face because I, I don't have double objective zones and there's a reason for that and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, I'm, 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 the best I'm going to get is an either an, a straight up A1 result or an A1 with a situational, uh, meaning that the defender can either retreat or they can just elect to take step loss. Now, with six steps here, uh, as the Americans, I'm going to take those step losses until I get down to three or two steps, and then I'll take the retreat and then I'll let these guys in. So that would be two engagements I would have to execute against with incredibly good die rolling to be able to push this guy away. Uh, pretty tall order. This, this brings the other factor into play here. There's so many of these little battalions kind of stacked up, zones of control and whatnot, that 26 volts grenadier is just gonna have a dickens of a time trying to get in here. So, so what I've done is I've moved these armored units away a turn too soon because they could have been used more effectively assuming the chip pulls came out the right way which they didn't because the first one I pulled out was 26 volts grenadier uh, I could have I could have uh, done some work on these units maybe drop some steps on them uh, make them a little weaker maybe force them to retreat by my actions by engaging them directly, right? Or something like that. We could not, not engaging them. We would have been uh, shooting at them and, and reducing steps is all we could have done. 
So this, there were some different things I perhaps could have done. So there's really no chance for us to advance these two or three hexes, knowing that in a couple of turns, up this road is going to come the 4th Armored Division, and they're going to come barreling into my flank and make my life a misery. Now, <clears throat> why didn't we get a double tap earlier on? Well, I, was, I mentioned that. A double tap is a, a double objective zone, and in order to have a double objective zone, you need to have a, a full activation. And full activations are a function of uh, a roll on the snafu table, and you either fail, get a partial, or you receive a full activation. And when you get a full activation, you get to do cool things and have all your guys move full movement rate. If you get a partial, they get one objective uh, chit, and they move at half their movement rate. The things that impact a snafu, which if you're familiar with the system, you know that it's their fatigue level, uh, whether things are coordinated, whether we've got you know formations mixed up in amongst each other, uh, or maybe that's actually, no, that's not what, mixed formations is what I was thinking of. Uh, then there's coordination markers, and then there's how how is your main supply route? Is it optimal distance? That's a benefit. If are your trains flipped over, your your supply trains flipped over, that's a negative. Are your streams crossed because of the roads? All uh, well, you can't see. Let's just move this up a little bit. You know, I, I this this supply train and this supply train here are all eventually going to uh, go back to the same source. So they're going to have. Uh, crossing streams and uh, Lear is going to have poor trafficability because we, we, we move some of our supplies across tracks and stuff. So what does that mean? It means that I'm very rarely, unless I roll box cars, I'm very rarely, or an 11, I'm very rarely going to get a full activation as because my fatigue level has been so high. And in fact, what I've been doing uh, for uh, Volk's Grenadier, uh, this, this turn is uh, I did a recovery and didn't move anybody to get it down to a two, right? Uh, so that I could then try for a second activation. I was fortunate enough to get a second, a second activation. I rolled a four, I rolled a four, five, or six, and I would get a second activation because that little die there has a four on it, and any number equal to or higher than that allows us to uh, have a second activation. And, and then so I, I would roll, and now I'm only adding two to the die roll instead of three, or sorry, subtracting two from the die roll instead of three. Uh, so you can see that with that and any coordination or ghost trains or crossing of the streams, I'd be subtracting three, four, or five from a die roll on 2d6 with an average of seven. You can see that it's going to make it really hard for these guys to, to get become active and effective in, in a turn. The scenario runs until the 26th, so we've got some time, but we have these, as I said, these enemy reinforcements coming. So, for all that it's going to do me good uh, to have Leah execute its minimum number of units and 2nd Panzer execute and uh, remove its minimum number of units in this turn, that's only half or, or two-thirds of the objectives that need to happen. The, the rest is, you know, obviously capturing this hex here. Uh, these hexes here for Bastogne. And, and what's interesting, too, is I actually did some uh, counterattacks with the 101st Airborne. They're pretty freaking tough. They uh, Even even uh, for them, even with support uh, not dropped by, uh, by, the, uh, by the attack, they still had enough oomph in them uh, doing a one-two punch. I attacked, I, for instance, there was a German unit here somewhere. I attacked with one formation. Those Germans uh, took a loss and stayed in place. I attacked again. I was like, well, gee, I, I really can't afford to take another loss there, so I better retreat. So I had to retreat back three. Uh, so they, they had some punch to them because m these guys weren't in prepared defenses, so there was no bonus there. These guys had a, a, a bonus of, I think, two on their AR rating because they were a five, and who they were actually attacking was a three. In fact, it was this little second panzer dude here. Um, so they they actually pack quite a little bit of punch. So it's been really, really interesting. Now, you may think because of all the kind of woe is me uh, commentary that I'm not enjoying it. I am enjoying it. It's very interesting. 
I've made, you know, obviously made mistakes. I actually reset this and started it again uh, for some what I would call significant errors. And so I, you know, wanted to play mostly correctly. Uh, and what what I'm going to end up doing now, uh, I think the the challenge that I have or that we potentially have as game players is because there's new fresh ideas here and new fresh systems and new ways of having sort of kinetic engagements with each other uh, in the with the pieces here that you need uh, you need to build up in uh, using a sports metaphor you need to build up that muscle memory of how all this sort of stuff works and it's this is not a game you can kind of just pull out and slap it on the table and start running with it generally speaking uh, it was interesting I was watching watching some guys play maybe it was Friday night or Thursday night watching them play and they were relatively seasoned and they were still making mistakes because uh, you know whether we were just chit chatting and being casual or whether they just you know it's there's a lot going on right so it's, it's easy to make mistakes so building muscle memory if I can use that term is pretty important here so one of the things I'm going to do uh, is we're going to use we're actually going to use last book Blitzkrieg and those chaps uh, I'm going to get together with them in January and we're going to play the uh, northern I think uh, the f northern or the first half of the campaign and so it'll be once a week or once every two weeks we'll get together online there'll be four of us I believe and we're going to play so that'll give me a weekly uh, engagement with this and we'll be able to get snafu done correctly and use the the msrs correctly and make sure we make our the right choices for how we engage how we do fire attacks how we do shock combat how we do regular combat uh how we treat fatigue and retreats and all that sort of good stuff and and make sure that we get that uh down to more of a, a familiar, repeatable uh, set of actions that we don't have to go, oh, now what do I do again? Um, I, and so I can certainly see the diff, so, so there's that. So I, you know, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm still fascinated with this system. It uh, has an aspect to it that makes me feel like it's a little fiddly but uh, I can certainly particularly after reading the series support book I can certainly see the concepts at the battalion scale is very different from GTS or CSS or TCS the tactical combat system at platoon scale or company scale for GTS completely different gameplay and different systems and no, no comparison could really be drawn between those other than they're all interesting right uh, there's there's a significant difference between the ver the version 2 rules and the version 1 rules and I think my disservice to myself was jumping in early with Last, Blitz, Last Blitzkrieg, getting frustrated with the V1 rules, which were, while polished, were not finished, really. As we see the version 2 rules, they're significantly different to me. And enough so that uh, it's taken me some relearning. And despite my exposure to brazen brazen chariots and uh aracor and uh oh, i can't remember the name of the other title and i don't have it here in the house so i can't buy them so i can't uh you'll know what it is whatever uh, the other the other the other um the tobruk module is the one i'm talking about uh but nevertheless oh baptism of fire i'm thinking of i'm thinking of casserine and tobruk uh, brazen chariots was tobruk uh so the casserine module uh so those three games i've played them a bit but not enough to solidify the rule system so i guess this is a long-winded way of saying i'm really enjoying this i would encourage anyone who picked up uh panzer battles on sale when they had the sale to read the series support book and read it from cover to cover and and absorb what the lessons that are trying to be imparted to us from this system from the designer by the designer to help us understand and appreciate a little bit more uh, what is going on in the game it, it really helped me a lot and then the other trick is you know pay attention to 
the counter definitions. I, I had the same issue with TCS where I read the rules and kind of skimmed over the counters and you, uh, the counter definitions and what, what was what. Very, very, very important here. This, this unit key, I keep it on the table now as it, it reminds me that armor um, values, you know, red AVs and uh, uh, limited AVs and standoff AVs and what's this, you know, support units, static units, all those different, those different uh, movement types. They're all, those concepts are all interrelated and they fit into movement, they fit into combat, they fit into how you track back for MSRs and so it's very, very important. Uh, anyway, Long-winded way of saying, I've had a lot of fun with this. Got people coming over for dinner tonight. Time for this to go uh, bye-byes. We're, we're going to leave it off here with a uh, solid American victory. So nice and historical from that perspective. Poor play on my part in, as far as it pertains to using and taking advantage of the formations. I would love to play this again just to explore how to better use 26 uh, Volks Grenadier in conjunction with Lear before it has to move off so that we could chip away and get much, much closer here and, and really uh, force the issue and make it a little tighter for the, for the Yanks uh, before the 4th Armoured uh, guys uh, enter the map and raise holy hell with uh, the Germans. So interesting stuff. All right, all the best. Talk to you soon. Roll those dice. Enjoy the Thanksgiving break, and we'll talk to all of you soon.